The World Bank and its sister organization, the International Monetary Fund, are very special organizations. They are sitting on top of the world's wealth, which was put into a secret account, and it has more gold than anybody knows about. And it is cloaked in secrecy. The bankers do not own that money. It's held in benefit for humanity. World Bank and the IMF are listed on a special agreement that was signed in 1950 about that assets, it's gold. It's more gold than people know about. It's over a million metric tons of gold. And uh, the World Bank and the IMF have a special role to play, making sure that that money is spent to the benefit of humanity. So where is the gold? A lot of people, some people believe that the gold in Fort Knox has disappeared. Um, that's been in question for many years. Congressmen have attempted to get an audit of the gold in Fort Knox. Um, so a million metric tons of gold is not something you can just hide. Where would you say that that gold is being stored? 400,000 metric tons are in the Central Bank of the Philippines. There's over 200,000 metric tons in Union Bank of Switzerland. And some of that gold is buried securely in the Philippines as well. Some of it is held in various banks, but the bulk of it is in the Philippines. So the World Bank holds the note on that gold? No. It is in a special trust account that was set up by Ferdinand Marcos. So how do, how do the people get the gold back? If it's their gold and it was taken by these bankers, how do we receive it? That is, that is the question. And they're just sitting there illegally and refusing to relinquish it. Part of the problem is that it's, this gold is cloaked in secrecy. Contact Phoenix Journal Review. Independent Confirmation of the Philippines Gold. Throughout the Spanish occupation of the Maharlika, members of the Tagay and Italiano clan have been visiting Europe since some of their relatives were English and Austrian. From 1866 to 1898, Prince Julian MacLeod Italiano, who became title holder of OCT, 01-4 in 1864, had also been frequenting the Vatican. In 1934, under Pope Pius XII, the Vatican negotiated with a member of the Filipino royal family, the Christian Taliano clan in the Maharlika. An agreement was reached that 640,000 metric tons of the Taliano gold would be lent to the Pope. This was part of that gold accumulated by the Southeast Asian Srivijayan Majapahit Empire during its glorious reign of 900 years. In 1939, two members of the Taliano family and a Roman Catholic priest, Father Jose Antonio Diaz, brought the gold from Cota Kinabalu, Saba, to the Vatican. After doing this, Father Diaz went back to the Maharlika and resided in Cabanichuan City. After World War II, he facilitated the safe return of the 640,000 metric tons of gold from the Vatican to the Maharlika. Manuel Acuna Rojas, a relative of the Acuna Tagi and Taliano clan, then a congressman, and Bishop Enrique Sobra Pena Sr., in the presence of attorney Lorenzo Tanyada, received the gold in Manila. Having gained the trust and confidence of Father Diaz, the Taliano clan made him the main negotiator and trustee of their gold. Father Diaz, in turn, hired the services of attorney Ferdinand Marcos, then a highly recommended brilliant young lawyer having attained notoriety when he successfully defended himself in the Nalun Dasan case in 1939. The Taliano clan paid commission to Father Diaz and attorney Marcos in gold, 30% from the principal of 640,000 metric tons. In 1949, the two richest men in the world were Father Jose Antonio Diaz and Attorney Ferdinand Marcos. Between the two of them they legitimately earned and owned 192,000 metric tons of gold. Ferdinand Marcos withdrew their share of the gold from the central bank and minted it, RPCB. Sometime later, Father Diaz and Marcos brought their gold to Switzerland in the Swiss Bank Corporation in Zurich. 
The remaining 400,000 metric tons of Taliano gold is in the third floor basement of the Central Bank Minting Plant in East Avenue, Quezon City. Gold for gold, dollar for dollar, this country, the Maharlika, is the richest country in the world. During a talk show in IUS TV the week following the bombing of the New York Twin Towers, President Bush was asked this question, which is the richest country in the world today? With a smile he said, the Philippines. On April 9, 1973, Marcos said, My earthly goods have been placed in the custody and for the disposition of the Marcos Foundation dedicated to the welfare of the Filipino people.